Hello everyone, welcome to your 12th C++ Cute Game tutorial. Let's go ahead and read our design documentation and see what we need to do next. So this part of the design documentation described the tower. We're done dealing with the tower for now. Let's move on to the enemy. So let's go ahead and read the notes that I've jotted down on how to basically implement the enemy. <clears throat> the enemies will have a list of points they need to go to. They go straight at their current angle. So let's just highlight the important things. They have a list of points. They need to go straight at their current angle. Um, in the beginning, the angle is set towards the first point. So the first point is their original destination. <clears throat> when they reach a point, so in other words, when they're within a certain radius to their destination, the next point is set as their destination. And the and uh, they rotate to face that destination. So what this is basically saying is that when you reach your first destination, then set the next point in the list of points as your destination. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this class. We'll just call it enemy. So add the header file and the source file. <clears throat> Okay, and then let's add an image inside our resource file to represent the enemy. So remember that a resource file is just a handy way to ship a bunch of files with your executable. Let's open up our resource file and then add a new file inside the images folder. And that will be enemy.png. Here it is. Okay, so we need to include QGraphics PixMap item um, because our enemy is an image that needs to go inside a scene. So Q graphics. We also need to include Q object because our enemy needs to be able to handle signals and slots. So there we go. We also need to include the Q object macro to make it be able to handle signals and slots. And then the enemy needs a list of points. So let's include Q list and points. So include Q list and include um, Q point F. <clears throat> I mentioned this before, but just again, the Q list is just like a C list except it has a few convenient um, things. One of them being that you can use the stream operator to insert things into the list. So if you have a list, you can do this to insert an element into the list. Um, I wanted to make a quick comparison between the F version and the non-F version of certain classes, such as the Q point F and the regular Q point, or the Q line F and the regular Q line. So the F versions are internally represented by uh, floating point numbers. So they, they're decimals. The non-F version, they're internally represented by integers. Um, now besides being just more precise, the F versions also have additional member functions. For example, the Q line F has an angle member function that returns its current angle with the positive X axis. The non-F version, or the Q line, does not have this member function. So in conclusion, usually just go ahead and use the F version of these classes because you get more precision and more functionality, um, unless you have a really good reason to use the non-F version. <clears throat> so let's give the enemy a list of points. We'll just call it points. We also need each enemy to have a destination that they're going to travel towards. So their current destination, we'll make that a Q point and call it dest, short for destination. And then we also need to know which point we are currently at in the list of points. So some indexing thing. Um, we'll just call it point index. And this will tell us whether we're at the zeroth point in the list, the oneth point in the list, etc. Let's give it a constructor. Okay. And uh, you always want to put this 
in the constructor of your custom classes because you want your classes to be able to have a parent in case users of your classes for example if other programmers use your code if they want to give this enemy a parent they can choose to do so uh, to do so even if you want to give it an enemy you can choose to do so so just always include that um, and then let's give it a slot so we want the enemy to move forward at its current angle so let's create a slot which can be connected to a queue timer and this slot will just move it forward so periodically we want the enemy to move forward now I, I've noticed that I often need to uh, rotate the objects to make them face a certain point so anytime you notice you're doing things often you want to encapsulate it in some sort of function so I'm going to encapsulate the rotating an enemy to face a certain point inside a member function for the enemy. I'm just going to call it rotate to point. This member function will just take a point and it will rotate the enemy to face that point. Okay, so let's go ahead and start implementing some of our, uh, these member functions. I'll start with the constructor, which is where I usually start. First thing we want to do in the constructor is set the graphics. So set pix map, q pix map, um, and that means we have to include q pix map now. Okay, and then we give the q pix map a file name, a file path. So remember when we want when you want to specify a file that lives in a resource file, you have to start your path with a colon, and then just like a regular path. We want to go inside the images folder of the resource file and then we want to get enemy.png. Okay. Now we want to set the initial points. Or we want to give the enemy some points to follow. We'll just give it a few random points. Well, I'll just give it two for now. So basically, we're putting two points into its list of points, 200, 200, and 400, 200. So if our algorithm works correctly and the enemy follows these points, it should first um, move down left, that's because of the 200, 200, then it should just move to the right. I'm sorry, it should be down right. Yeah. And then it will just move to the right because we keep the Y the same. Okay. Now we want to set its initial destination. Well, before even doing that, we want to set the point index. So remember that the point index tracks which, which um, uh, index of the point list we are currently traveling towards. So you want to set that to zero. And then let's set the destination to be the zeroth point in the points list. I hope that wasn't confusing to hear. Okay, now we want to connect a timer to the move forward member function. So we have to include queue timer, make a queue timer, and then let's connect the timer's timeout slot, uh, signal to this enemy's. Uh, move forward so that whenever the timer executes it will execute the move forward member function of this enemy so connect the timers timeout signal with this enemy's move forward slot and let's start the timer every 150 milliseconds <clears throat> Okay, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and implement the remaining member functions. So we'll start by implementing rotate to point. This member function takes a point and it will just rotate the enemy to face that point. Now, the way that I plan to do that is simply by creating a line from the current position of the enemy to the point that it needs to rotate to. And then just rotating the enemy to face that line basically to be parallel to that line so q line f ln from the position to the place that we need to face and then we're going to set the rotation to be negative one times the angle of this line 
And the reason why we use this negative 1 is because ln.angle will return the angle that this line creates with the positive x-axis in a counterclockwise direction. But the rotation, the set rotation member function rotates clockwise. So to take care of that little discrepancy, we just multiply it by a negative 1. So multiplying this counterclockwise by a negative 1 makes it clockwise, basically. You can remember it that way. All right, let's see what else we need to implement. Move forward. Now the move forward of the enemy is identical to the move forward of the bullet. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste the code. Um, usually you want to think a little bit more and find a better solution such as refactoring instead of copying and pasting, but in order to save time I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay, so step size for the um, enemy we want it to be much less than the bullet because the bullet needs to be a lot faster than the enemy. And then everything else looks okay. Okay, so this will simply move enemy forward at current angle. All right, let's go into our game class. And inside the game constructor where we initialize everything, let's create an enemy, a test enemy. So include enemy and then create it. And then also remember that you have to add the Q graphic item to a scene in order to actually see it. It's not enough just to create it. So we'll do scene. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Unresolved external symbols. Now recall that we usually get this error when we add a new file to our project, especially if that file uh, defines a class that needs to be able to handle signals and slots. We take care of this usually by going to build, clean all, build, run QMake, and then that usually takes care of it. And it did, but we have another error. So Q sign identifier not found. Well, that's because the, um, the Q sign and the Q cosine and the Q degrees to radians functions are in a header file called Q map. So you have to ensure that header file is included. That should take care of that. And there we go. So the enemy spawns at 0, 0 by default. And it's given a list of points. One of the points is here. The other is here. But the enemy just moved towards its current angle. So when we initialize it, let's have it rotate towards its first destination. So uh, let's go inside the enemy constructor. After we set the destination to be the first point in the points list, let's actually rotate it. So we created this member function called rotate to point, which rotates to a certain point. And which point do we want to rotate to? Its destination. And let's test that out. Okay. So the enemy, again, is initialized with a list of points which contain the point here and another point here. The enemy initially is rotated towards its first destination, and then it moves forward at its current angle. So the next logical step is to detect when the enemy reaches its current destination and have it rotate towards the next point in its points list. So let's go in the move forward member function. And before moving it forward, let's see if it's close enough to its destination. So if close to dest, rotate to next destination. OK. Um, and how we're going to test the distance is basically I want to create a line that goes from the current position of the enemy to its destination. And then I just, I'm just i going to see the length of that line. If that line is really small, it means we're close enough to that destination. So Q line F. Okay, so if um, ln.length, if the length of this line is less than 5 pixels, so if you're within 5 pixels of your destination, then you want to rotate towards the next point in your points list. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we increase the point index to show that now we're moving to the next point in our points list. And then we want to uh, set our destination to that new point. Okay, 
and then we actually want to rotate towards this new updated destination. Um, rotate to point nest. Okay, so let's test this out. <clears throat> so there we go. The enemy is initialized with a list of two points, one here, one here. When it reaches its destination, which is initially set to the first point, um, well, let me rephrase that. So basically, the enemy is initialized with a list of points. Don't worry about this error yet. Um, and its initial destination is set to the first point in that list of points. Now, when it moves at its current angle, when it reaches its first destination, or its current destination, then it will move to the uh, next point in its point list. And the reason why we get this member function is because even after we've reached the last point in our points list, we still try to update this point index, and then we try to access an index that no longer exists. Um, so that's an easy fix. It's not that bad, but this tutorial is long enough. I want to try to keep them a little bit shorter. So I'll leave that as an exercise to you guys. Check to make sure that the point index is not bigger than the size of the points list. And then if it's not, you want to move on to the next point. But if it's bigger, it means that you're already at your last destination. So in that case, you'd want to do something like print to the screen, um, QDebug, uh, final destination reached, or however you want to do it. So that's an exercise for you guys. Um, I've been getting some feedback on the previous tutorials, saying that the pace is good. I would appreciate it if you guys let me know if the pace is still good, or if I'm moving too slow for you guys now, or too fast. I purposely made these past two tutorials kind of review the important concepts um, because these concepts that we've been reviewing you will use for 90% of the game development that you do using C++ and Q. So they're really important, but we're also going to learn a lot of new things. And basically I'm going to continue making this tower defense game and uh, whenever I get a chance to use a new cute concepts, I'll incorporate that and I'll show it to you guys. So uh, as always, I really appreciate any feedback. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.